Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and broke all of Old Bag's Psyche Locks. It was pretty easy because we just had to present one thing and they all broke. And in this episode, we're going to figure out what you witnessed. Also, if I've done my math right, which I might not have, I'm pretty sure this is episode 42. Which would mean that this game is currently the longest running series on my channel. Uh, taking over the spot from 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. So that's a cool bit of trivia. By the way, go back and watch the 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors series. 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors on the DS is genuinely probably my favorite game of all time. It's incredible. Anyways, let's actually get on to the part you wanted to see. Continuing on with the game. I feel bad for you now. Huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding. Oh no. It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And? Did you tell that to the police? Well, of course! I thought I could get a gift certi certificate or two out of it. Maybe more. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for that part of the trial. You know, that trial tomorrow? This time, you're gonna get it. I'm gonna work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. But Mr. On Guard hasn't done anything done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know he did my dear poor Juan in. I just do. That yellow bellied chicken. Yellow bellied chicken? I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad and I say he did it. What did Mr. On Guard ever do to her to deserve this? What did Mr. Ungard do to you to make you so... You don't know? That guy, he framed my Juan. He created that scandal that plagued poor Juan. Mr. Nick. What is it? What's a scandal? Oh, um, I'll tell you about that after we get home, okay? Poor Juan, led astray by the wiles of that vile temptress. Mr. Nick, what do vials and wild temptress mean? Ugh. Um, how about we just listen to what Miss Oldback has to say for now, okay, Pearls? So, Miss Oldback, who's this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy, he shoved that girl onto Juan on purpose. His own manager. But why? I thought you lawyers were smart. It was to create a scandal to make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. When do you know about that anyway, Miss Old Bag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. Unguard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Ugh, of course. A tabloid. Next week? Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Old Bag have information like that? And where did she get it? Hehehe. <laughs> Ugh. Well, thankfully, we don't have to talk to her too much anymore, so... Let's head back over to the hallway here, because I'm pretty sure we have some more information. Because now that we've broken Old Bag's locks, we can break Lotta's locks. Big Scoop. Lotta, will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I, for my scoop. What I want to know about the, what I want to know about are the details of this scoop. And that's not something I can tell you. I mean, there, that there's my bread and butter. All right then, an unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. I'm going to say that you were looking into a scandal. Yeah. Could it be that you, Lotta Hart, were looking for a break with a huge story? Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Juan Carita and this person? Well, if what we've just heard over the past few minutes is true, it'd be Adrian Andrews. This woman! She's Adrian Andrews, Matt Ungard's manager. Hmm. The Nicholas Samurai's manager caught secretly meeting with his rival, the Jammin' Ninja. It would be the hottest story of the season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. But you can't just make up any old thing and think it'll make the pipers. You gotta have backup. Backup? Yeah, yeah. You gotta have that, that, what's it, 
New sauce? Um, you mean news source? And that's it. So show me something that shows that Juan had something with Miss Andrews. That's a hard sentence to say. That's the magazine clipping. And this is the article from a certain weekly tabloid. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. Ah! Mr. Carita didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Mr. Engard's manager, a Adrian Andrews, she had the initials A.A. You saw this article and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were looking around Mr. Carita's door last night. Wah! You were looking into Mr. Corita and Miss Andrews' affair, weren't you? You got it! I was gonna get myself a scoop by catching them in a secret meeting. But there's already an article about it in one of the weekly tabloid magazines. It's no longer breaking news. What you just say? Her initials are AA. What kind of vague thing is that? That ain't no proof of nothing. People are gonna want to see real proof. Well, at least I do. So that's what I was doing. Getting photos. Oh. I'm gonna whip up the reader's interest with some gossip and a little misleading. Then spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Wow, a lot of nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished writing up my spicy article, you know. But... Huh? The paper I wrote it on, my note to myself, it's gone. Your note to yourself? It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. They got... They don't run off together. I came here for my big story, didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Yeah, I understand. It's enough to make a gal go bonkers, I tell you. What's with people now, anyway? I never thought I'd see the day when someone done steal something from me. You really want that note back, huh? I've got no idea why, though. The story on that note is probably a bold-faced lie. So now that we're done with Lottie here, let's move uh, outside of the hotel for once. We've been in this hotel in real time for the past couple of days. I know for Phoenix and Pearl and stuff like that, it's only been like maybe an hour or so at the most. But for you guys, we've spent the last couple of episodes here, so let's go ahead and leave. Detective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Hey, so you came, Belle. Why the blunt greeting? Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect and... Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and the testimony are airtight. tight. But... But... We can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. First of all, it's our first time seeing this place since... What? Case 4 of the last game? Aww, it's kinda cute. Mr. Nick? What is this stuffed animal's name? God, what voice do I give the chief? That's the blue badger. It was my idea. I made it. It's this precinct's mascot, you know? Oh, wow. I'll get him assigned mascot of every police station if that's the last thing I do. I hope you succeed in your mission, sir. This must be the chief of the de de detectives here. He's glued to his computer screen. What? The Hero of Heroes Award Ceremony! The grand prize got away from the German Ninja again? Shouldn't you be reading something more important? What's this guy gotta say? That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Freeze, police! Everyone against the wall, and where I can see him. Hey, what are you doing, Gumshoe? Their hands, not yours! He must be doing image trading for arrests. And these are the detectives' desks. There are computers and files on each one. Funny, they're a lot tidier than I expected. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. And there, these are the detectives' desks. Alright, that's about it, it to investigate here. What's going on, Gumshoe? So what do you mean the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, Belle, but there's two big pieces. T two? And both of them are in this photo. 
The first is the button that's missing from the victim's chest. Hmm. And that's the button you found during your body search of Mr. Engard. Yep, I found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai Special Pants. Um, uh, and the second one is? The knife is in his chest, Bell. The fingerprints on the knife in his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Um, whose are they? You didn't even have to ask, little missy. It's obvious. They're mad on gods. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what about this airtight testimony? It's that old security lady, Miss Oldbag. I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Did you tell you something, pal? Um, well... And I even told her not to open that mouth of hers to blab anymore. Her blab knob is stuck on 10, and there's no turning it down. Trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Oldbag saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. Rungard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. N no way! Next thing we want to talk about is the... Uh, uh, the affair with Unguard's manager and Corita. We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal with Mr. Corita? But why? Well, two years ago, a woman committed suicide. Suicide? Her name was Celestine Pax. And she was one Corita's manager. The victim's manager. But that's not all, pal. Miss Inbax was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor? A woman who is both Miss Corita's manager and Miss Andrews' mentor. Could her suicide have something to do with this case? Do you want to know more about it, pal? Alrighty. She was the victim's manager, and was also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. It's been two years since her suicide. Now those two are linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence, but... Wah! I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. M Miss Von Karma? You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. Y you don't... You don't mean... I do, Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You're no longer needed. Goodbye. Th that's... Wait! Please wait, sir. If I don't get this month's pay, I'll start... Quiet! If I... If it went for traitors like you... I would have won. Is that what you want to say? Uh, who? That voice. Uh, Edgeworth! It's been a long time, right? This person... This is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I going to do with you? Still blaming others when things go wrong. You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. You... You... How dare you show your face to me with such a shred of shame upon it! You soiled the Von Kama name and dragged it through the mud. Run away with your tail between your legs like the ill-bred dog you are! Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way. Then let's hear it, Francisca. How are things going? I hear you're having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. Y you You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I... I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix Wright. I will see you tomorrow, in court. I will be a- it will be a clinical lesson in the meaning of total victory. Humph. Still the same wild mare she always was. I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick! I- I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Are you going to run tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? That's why Mayor hasn't given in yet, it seems. So no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy. 
Not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at the trial tomorrow. What's that supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And that's the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you ever feel the need for my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous with information. Just what is going on? Just what is going on inside his head? So yeah, Edgeworth is back. Uh, putting aside how I feel about his handling in this game, his theme song, the one that's playing in the background right now, is freaking awesome. It is absolutely incredible. Probably one of my favorite tracks in the entire series. Definitely in like the top ten. A lot of things may have happened, however, Manfred von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record is proof of a von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. You've been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. I see. Then let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Well, if it was Francisca, she would almost definitely say, I will defeat you this time, the, inst the instant she saw me. But, the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. To save their lives. To save your client, you say? Those who think only of their own ego-driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. Even if you're a prodigy. Or someone like you, Edgeworth. It looks like there is still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn? Me? Hmm. Well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is coming soon enough. Well, with Edgeworth's great return and this awesome theme music, I think this is probably a good place to end off the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and continue talking with Edgeworth and try to see if we can learn more about this case. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!